I need a deadbolt hammer for assembling projects and what have you. But the thing is, I don't want a plastic deadbolt hammer. Personally, I find plastic tools terribly ugly, and as such, I thought I'd take some time off of socializing with my large quantity of super cool and popular friends to design and fabricate a deadblow hammer that's completely different from anything else I've seen before. The twist is, instead of using traditional sand or beads to absorb the energy, I want to use basic fluid dynamics. It's nothing new, it's exactly how shock absorbers work in vehicles, but I've never seen this technology appropriated to deadblow hammers, so it'll be an experiment in that manner. My design has four identical brass chambers that absorb the energy. I'm going to turn these on the wood lathe. I made an entire video on how to turn brass on the wood lathe, so feel free to check that out after this video. It should also be noted that although more complicated, you could do this without a lathe and with simple copper tubing. As previously stated, these chambers are essentially just shock absorbers. They consist of a vessel which is plugged on both ends by a pair of end caps, and well of course one of these end caps is going to have a hole in it to replenish the fluids. The method of sealing is non-permanent, this means that you can undo the screw and the o-ring, and you could swap it with different weight of fluids. The key component is a brass weight. This weight offers a method to transfer the energy from a change of momentum to the fluid. Essentially, you have to view the weight as not moving inside the hammer, but as the hammer moving around the weight. The mass is then going to have a hole through it. The relationship between how viscous the fluid is and the size of the hole within the mass is going to dictate the resistance and movement between the hammer and the mass. The weight of these fluids could be used to tune at which rate of disacceleration the pistons offer the best performance at. Now, before telling me that no sane human would purge the oil out of their mallet just to be able to tune it to the optimal amount of energy absorbed with respect to the rate of this acceleration, well, don't put me on the spot like that. I'm sure someone would need that, maybe? A spring is added to this ensemble. The role of the spring is simply to lift the weight back into position after the hit. It doesn't actually absorb any energy on its own. This also makes the unit unidirectional, which means that you can only hit the hammer on one face and not on both. When juxtaposing the technology I appropriated with the one that's traditionally used, you'll notice they have very little in common. One has metal bees in it and mine has liquids in it, so technically, scientifically speaking, they're not the same. The parts will be held together through the magic of solder. Of course, if you breathe in less of the fumes, your experience might be a little bit less magical than mine. But, you know, 2020 kind of just left me...
And well, here's the completed capsules. I made four of them, of course, but I only filmed one. You're probably not surprised to learn that I did test my theory before making four of them. I executed several different tests, and here's how they went. I started by making a capsule that's just solid metal. In this case, it's just a bunch of bolts, but the point is it doesn't have any technology to absorb the energy. After that, I made a capsule that's simply filled with sand. I believe they will react the same way as metal beads as long as I match the weight. And finally, my liquid mess. Isn't it just... gorgeous? And of course, all three were matched in weight at just over 100 grams. To see which one performed the best, I simply dropped all three of them onto a dense piece of carbon fiber foam from a height of about 8 feet. I started with the solid mass, just the bolts together. I then dropped it 15 times. The green number is the lowest it ever went, the red number is the highest it ever went, and the yellow number is the average of all 15 times. The process is then repeated for the sand, and finally with the fluid dynamics. So, the information to gather from these tests is that the liquid chambers did really really well. They did over 4 times as well as the sand, and the sand did almost twice as well as the solid materials. And here it is in slow motion, you can really see the difference of how well each of these do. And now in slow motion but all at once.
need this specifically for assembling furniture, so the mallet can't just be wood, it's gonna need a softer face. Rubber is cheap and it will last a while, but I want something with a little more... Mm, dressed up? <laughs> I'm pleasantly surprised with how well the mallet works. Compared to a regular hammer, you can see and hear the difference. It truly sounds dead. I wish I had an off-the-shelf dead blow hammer to compare it to, but I don't. But it really does work really, really well. If I simply drop it, you can observe the unidirectional properties of the cylinders I made. Speaking of which, loading the brass into the hammer almost makes me feel American. But most of all, this mallet looks like the type of mallet you'd want on your workbench. <laughs> I don't want to tarnish this smooth jazz with my voice, but this would be a good time to remind you that liking, subscribing, and commenting helps this channel grow, which is great. And I make and sell my own tools, so check that out in the description. Until next time!